within the Great Pacific Garbage Patch or if you're looking at just the North Pacific subtropical gyre, you have a variety of different ecosystems to consider and all these different components are contributing to a whole. And it's very important to understand all those different facets of this whole and how our operations and technology could impact one or multiple of those facets. There is uh, a bit of everything in this, uh, in this ecosystem. Marine mammals, sea turtles, many species of seabirds, sharks, manta rays, uh, uh, tuna, and this basically the mentioning the, the bigger component, but there is also the smaller component, there is all the ichthyoplankton, the neoston, there is algae, uh, of course uh, all the zooplankton and phytoplankton. So the presence of animal goes from really big to the very small one like uh, uh, microplankton. We'll be going out there, we'll be cleaning and collecting the plastic, however, there could be organisms either caught in the plastic or utilizing the plastic as, as habitat. And it's something that, that we need to understand. Eventually, at least what we believe in the ocean cleanup, is that the bigger picture is that the ocean doesn't have plastic floating at surface anymore. That's the, the end goal. That's the best case scenario that we want to reach because that is when the impact is the lowest uh, for the ocean. How do you get there? Well, you have to balance it out in the way that your operation don't destroy that environment while you get to that goal. At the moment there is one camera system here which looks to all this area, so looks to looking to the front, mm -hmm. and that one is uh, with color and will allow also to have a look of what is happening underneath where we have the escape uh, routes for the marine, uh, marine animals. The detectability of the system, for example, is very important. Making a system which is detectable from a visual point of view, from an acoustic point of view, from a vibrational point of view, because vibrations are very important in the water and also especially for fish, it was one of the ways that we found to reduce the possible risk of the system itself. Basically, for System 002 mission, we have uh, explored a lot of options and uh, we're gonna have a lot of technology that allowed us to improve uh, our understanding of the impact. Uh, starting from the protected species observer, which of course are gonna be on board and will be equipped uh, with the basic uh, technology like binoculars that they can have, but at the same time also thermal and infrared cameras which are mounted on the vessel and will be able to scan the surrounding area 24 seven. So giving information also when visibility is lower. We're gonna have cameras mounted on the system itself, connected Wi-Fi to the vessel. And this is very important because especially the area where most of the risk can occur, so the retention zone area, is gonna be monitored by five cameras. All of this is also uh, in relation to what we call it the quick release. So basically it's a device that in case of an impact is occurring, we can trigger a remote control and open the back of the retention zone, which means the system becomes open. Anything that gets in will also get out. That is very important in the sense of mitigation, because if there is any issue, especially with protected species, we can intervene and we can mitigate that, uh, uh, that impact. You see always two pods because one is going to be for the camera and one is going to be for the light. Since this is not just a, a one-off research expedition, this is something that we, we plan to eventually scale up, be out there as much as possible, and really do our best to remove plastics. And in order to do that with the least amount of negative impacts to the environment, uh, because that's the whole point, we're, we're here for the environment, we're also conducting research during this entire time. We have a research team 
uh, performing their plastics research, and then we're also looking into Newston, and we're collecting data daily in order to understand what species are present, composition of species, and how, how are they impacted. Looking at bycatch and looking at the plastics and further understanding what we are collecting and in what quantities, then we can say, okay, this is either a sustainable or not sustainable approach to this. But I think ultimately um, there will always be some level of impact. It's about trying to reduce those impacts as much as possible while trying to increase those positive impacts. Very relevant for the new development of the ocean cleanup uh, uh, ocean system is the shift from a passive technology to a native technology. There is, uh, well, let's call it an elephant in the room, which is the, 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 the carbon emission. And because we want to have a net positive impact on the environment, we have, of course, considered this aspect as well. The reason why we move to an active technology, it's also to a certain extent to possibly reduce our environmental and our carbon footprint because the analysis that we did on the scale-up scenario for a passive technology also considered emission for all the vessels that had to do the operation of the passive system. So not per se the passive technology was the most efficient in greenhouse gases emission. Actually the active technology can be more efficient and that's what we are working on and in general, we will always compensate for our carbon footprint because we want the project to have a net positive impact. So that impact also needs to be accounted for. Everybody that's working here, everyone has such an incredible desire to, to do good for the environment, to remove the plastics, to, to keep striving and moving forward. Really, everybody has has that baseline ethical, hey, we, we want to do the best that we can for the environment. I'm getting very excited, I have to be honest. I'm getting very excited, first of all, because uh, I think uh, we have done such a true job to really make it as uh, environmental ready. We had a lot of possibility into the design. At the same time, there is a lot of effort in terms of uh, a crew for the environmental scope. We are going to have four people, two on each vessel, dedicated only to the environmental scope. And that means that we are going to be able to learn so much in such a short amount of time. I'm really, really curious. I'm really excited to see if all this preparatory work that we have done will pay off and we have been able to design a technology and we will be able to operate a technology in an environmental safety manner.